What's going on, guys? Hey, great. Hi, Ben. He's not ready yet. Welcome back again. Oh, can you guys see my webcam? Huh? Ready? I just want to he's broken now, huh? So can you check the sound? Can you guys say something? Okay. So Ben, are you, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Danish. Hi. You have a good workout today, huh? Yeah, I have a great day. Oh, we waiting for Ben? Shoot, <laughs> yeah, sorry, you guys can't see me. I'm not sure why it's not working. Hi, Ben, we can see you now. <laughs> All right, well, let me turn off my, um, my streaming app. And uh, we'll see if maybe that makes a difference. Yep. Okay, perfect. Hi. Nice. You see the people behind? Oh, no, no, I can't hear you. <laughs> we can't hear you. In the breathing. Where is Sergio? <laughs> I don't see Sergio here. But he's on. But he's live. You think he's still asleep? He's falling asleep. I don't know. Maybe you should start. Yeah. you want to start first? Yeah, that's it. We love you. <laughs> Benjamin. Okay, so, Brennan, we are waiting for you. Brennan, do you want to start first? You want me to go first? Okay. Yep. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Jono. <laughs> so, go now or wait for Sergio? You should definitely start now. Okay. Definitely start now if you can, Renee. Okay, okay. Hi there, everyone. My name is Renee. I live in uh, Silicon Valley right now. Um, it is 11.30. I lived in Vietnam for a year, trying to work on uh, my own mobile apps. Um, I have a few that I've made, Delightful and Blissful. They are related to mental wellness. Uh, my Delightful app has been doing a little bit well lately. Um, I know I, I have been actually taking a little bit of a break from actively working on those because I have a full-time job now. Uh, so just kind of, t I actually took a trip to Vietnam recently um, and just kind of just giving myself a reset because one of the things I think uh, is a struggle when you're trying to make many things is focus. What do you work on and when do you work on it? So that's something now where I'm kind of just reevaluating what I've done and where I'm going to go next within the next six months to a year while also trying to work and save money. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to just quickly touch on for early growth, if you are going to make a mobile app, uh, is the importance of optimization as a small when you are just starting as a, a uh, small developer and you don't have any else other apps or any other thing else out there um, so just very high level things that are important um, are the type of your app uh, very if you imagine anyone searching for your app whether it be a journaling app a finance app um, trying to imagine what words are people searching just like they would be searching on Google? Uh, because in the key, right in your title of your app, we've all looked for and searched for an app. Uh, those keywords are one of the top things that Google and Apple both try to rank your app for. Um, so if you get those right, you can get some early traction just on those keywords. Um, another thing that's incredibly important 
uh, is very early on in your app development, asking for feedback through your application. And this also includes getting ratings uh, for your app. This actually is another heavily, um, heavy thing to be able to get visibility for your apps yeah. is to get ratings. Um, and it's also a good way to get the feedback you need uh, to actually make improvements to your product. Because if you don't, I think one of the things that my app struggles with now is there's an app that gives everything for free, that has all the features that I don't have. So my product is lacking. And so that's where I think when you already get past that point of organic growth and being found, you'll still get downloads, but you won't be the number one spot until you have a better product. And that's where you can find and use that feedback from your customers or from your people that are potential users to keep uh, keep the keep the ball rolling and getting more and more downloads uh, and getting more people using your application. So um, that's about all I had to talk about. I don't know if there was anything else um, you think I should mention, but I think that was just a quick quick little five minute spiel um, about ASO. Just a little couple few little nuggets. Um, I don't want to take too much time. Let everyone else speak. Well, can you um, can you hear me for, first off? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about the app? Like, um, what was the the core purpose of it, and like, what were some of the challenges that you you ran into after starting development? Yeah, can you guys share your screen and maybe? Open up the product hunt page for the for your respective products. I think that might be a cool thing to do. Uh, okay. I mean, mine didn't do that great. I didn't do a very good job on launching on product hunt since it was my first first time. But um, it's essentially my app that for this anyway that I've done that's done the most uh, well for me. It has about maybe fifteen thousand downloads and over four hundred four hundred reviews on over 400 reviews on Android and over like 100 reviews on the iOS version of the app. It's called Delightful. Uh, and that's just a, it's just a very, very simple uh, gratitude journal. Um, and a lot of that just came from, a lot of that, that ranking came from just asking people for a rating. Um, and it helped me get way more downloads a lot, a lot faster. Um, getting ratings, tweak keywords okay, and making sure the keywords of uh, gratitude gratitude journal gratitude journal app were throughout all of my different spots in my listing and in my title um, and that really is what drove uh, a lot of my growth to this point and now to go further and grow the app further is really to tweak the product into something that um, extra features and other things to compete against all the the journaling apps that are out there since it's a very highly competitive space. But if you do search the word gratitude, my app is the usually typically the third result. Um, and uh, but that still doesn't get the most download because the number one and two spots still get most of the downloads for um, for apps. So so it's very important to try and get into those top three spots, top one to two spots, really, if you for certain keywords. Um, on the app store, so, and that's all I had. Darn, man, that sounds, uh, super competitive. It reminds me of like the old, uh, Google search engine optimization days. <laughs> it's, hard in the, it's, it's honestly really hard in the mobile space when there's a lot of app developers that do try to give a lot of things for free. And my app is free right now, but there's people that give way more for free. Um, so and sometimes I just feel like it's really, really hard to compete um, in trying to build that. But that's why you have to find a niche. And I, and there are people that are, they, they donate and they give me some money, but it's small amounts of money. So that's awesome. It sounds like, I mean, you're making a lot of yeah. progress, though. So, yeah. yeah. Hi, it's Tani. So don't worry about that you are giving free because you know the best boss also. So you know the best boss, he is a uh, uh, educator, he makes the videos for React and JavaScript and stuff. 
तो ही एरली मेक द वीडियोस फ्री एंड ही शेयर द वीडियोस फ्री ऑफ कॉस आफ्टर फाइव सिक्स ट्यूटोरियल थी शेयर तो आफ्टर फाइव सिक्स वीडियो ही कम विद द प्रीमियम ट्यूटोरियल्स सो डोंट वरी मेक इट फ्री फॉर नाउ गेट सम यूजर्स सो यू विल गेट द प्रीमियम प्रोडक्ट देन यू विल गेट मोर बेनिफिट इट्स ओके बट फिफ्टीन के डाउन इज गुड Yeah, I mean, it, and just to give maybe one last comment. Uh, like I said, I was refocusing, and one thing I can, if I can give a piece of advice about being a maker is, financial independence or financial stability is incredibly important. So I know I took a year to really go to Vietnam and try and cha- challenge myself, but I also went into debt doing that. uh and now i'm paying the price for that and paying that off and getting back to a point where i have extra money so maybe i can try again in the future so if i can come across to anyone financial independence is incredibly important um give yourself way more runway and maybe more time to really explore um so if you can find a balance or maybe still get paid in some way while you're working on something you know it's kind of hard but if you can do that i think the best yeah, you know even um, yourself if you think yeah, you can do it don't quit just start building it start focusing on product it may be took you two years three years just don't quit take focus cool guys well um do you mind if i jump in yeah sure yeah <laughs> all right cool uh so hey i'm ben from uh code career uh you can always check us out codecareer.org/discord we're just kind of a small community of developers um not necessarily in the maker space but we had um gotten really passionate about uh the maker space probably a handful of months ago um stumbled upon 24 hour startup and um that's actually how i met uh, fajar and several of these other guys uh came across uh maker log and um so far you know i've i've loved being part of this community it's um everyone is super enthusiastic and it it really comes across you know everyone is super supportive and uh honestly there couldn't be a better uh you know s- um uh, movement to be a part of so uh super stoked for that but um yeah a little bit about myself in 2017 i started uh Yeah, 17 already. It <laughs> started uh 301 days of code. And uh you know, that's basically just a small challenge where you program for 301 days of code and then uh if you're a new programmer, then you use the remaining 64 days to focus on uh landing a job as well. Um you know, I'm a bit of a um I've wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was probably 16 and I've tried several different um businesses and offshoots of businesses uh for a number of years some have done well others have not done so well um i think the the biggest challenge when it comes to starting a company that um you know these guys already touched on a bit is definitely having that runway having that additional um income stream is very helpful so if um you know you need to freelance and try to work on an app or freelance and try to work on a community or something of that nature that you're trying to build uh you know definitely do that um that's that's a challenge i ran into myself as, as well in the past <clears throat> um so presently you know i'm working a full-time job and also slowly trying to grow code career on the side um so as you guys mentioned takes two to three years to, to grow stuff unfortunately uh you know if, if you're doing a full-time job as well so i guess that's that's probably the biggest thing i could recommend in anything that you do is have patience um you know some ideas will start small some ideas you don't think will take off actually do take off like you know with sergio's get maker log i'm sure he wasn't thinking initially you know this is going to be huge he was just having fun doing his own thing you know coding his own uh project like several other projects he's already created and um i think when he has a chance to speak he can speak more to that but uh i'm i'm impressed man it really took off um your user base is is on fire and i'm super stoked Thanks. about that <laughs> on um, fire literally with those streaks <laughs> 
Actually, I think this is a good segue if you want to uh, jump in, talk a little bit about it. Well, uh, uh, first of all, hi everyone. I am Sergio Matei. I am an indie maker. I've been shipping products since I was pretty much a kid, but uh, not very formally until recently, right? Uh, I have had a long history of little apps I want to build and uh, little startups too. And uh, my first successful product was my latest one. Right. So it's a maker log. It's a community of makers uh, shipping together, right, and encouraging each other to ship. And uh, I, I just love to share a lot of uh, knowledge I've gathered during this uh, uh, this whole wild ride of actually getting a product to work. I mean, it doesn't happen frequently for me. It's never happened before. And uh, I've learned so much from the maker community that uh, I just like to share a little bit. So the first thing I've learned, because I divided this into a few sections, I'd, I'd like to preface this too with, I haven't really prepared this very much. It's more of just a collection of knowledge. And uh, the first thing I've learned is, and this is a key takeaway that I want everybody to know, is that you can build. I, I see that indie maker the indie maker community faces a very big obstacle and mostly from people mostly from people getting into the community like joining and starting and getting started with their own products right and i think the biggest hurdle is mental it's all mental and i i came up with a set of rules right that have been more like a way of life for me for the past six months right and number one is for, for those getting started here, you can make a successful product. Nowadays, with technology, with, with the democratization of technology, with, with everybody being able to pick up a documentation and learn to code, right? you can build a successful product. It's no longer reserved to VC funded stuff, right? It's no longer reserved to people who just have a, an insane amount of capital to spend on, right? It's now accessible to everybody. And I want everybody who's trying to get started or just still hustling, getting that success and getting that success towards a product to just know, yes, you can make a successful product. The second golden rule of indie making, you can learn to code. If you don't know how to code yet, don't worry about it. Code, it seems hard. It really is. But nowadays, there's a lot of resources for you to get started, right? And for example, 301 days of code and, and uh, 100 days of code. Yeah, a lot of there's a lot of resources out there. So you definitely can learn to code. It's not it, it seems hard. It seems like a really insane struggle. It's like learning a new language, essentially but you can do it. And the golden rule number three, you can build great things because there's a difference between successful and great. There really is. But the, the last one I feel is the most important because great for me entails building something that has an impact. And you can, you alone, and not necessarily being you don't need to be a, a VC business to, to do something that has a massive impact on much people, right? You can impact lives, you can change lives. And I think that's something I, I discovered with MakerLog that you can make a great product. So I, I want those three to be the most, the, the key takeaways from, from my experience. It's something that has guided me for the past uh, X number of months. And uh, nowadays, then again, as I repeat over and over again, there's so many resources to get started. Uh, 100 days of code, 301 days of code, uh, documentation. You can't do this. Go do it. Get started. Go indie making. Now, there's another part that I really want to talk about. You can, it, you can build and you can also build an audience. So in my notes right now, I put this down as a very interesting part because uh, I have a bullet here literally called, I have a product. What do I do? Help. <laughs> um, 
Marketing is literally the hardest part of building product, right? But you can do it. You literally, you can also do this. <laughs> this is shaping up to be more of a motivational talk to, to indie makers. Um, there's three key words here that you gotta take away to. And I've learned these by making make a log into what it is now. I've learned these by just trial and error and just being myself on the internet. And I've learned that there's three core values that you need to keep. Number one, transparency. Number two, honesty. And number three, humanity. Transparency. Yeah. Yeah. Sergio, uh, can you share your screen? Because I'll, uh, oh, I'll make a lot. Oh, sure. It, it would be kind of like a. It would be an interesting dynamic because I'm streaming right now. <laughs> but uh, let, let's see. I can totally do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bingo. Uh, there we go. Uh, all right. So I'm screen sharing. Uh, you probably can't see my face now. Yeah. But, uh, it's okay. We can see the screen. But can you share the make a wall of the page? Uh, the Notion page? Sure. I'll send it. Um, uh, the three key words are essentially transparency, honesty, and humanity. If you're making a product, number one, be transparent about statistics, your intentions. Be transparent about everything and be honest. Uh, and by honesty, I mean uh, don't hide your intentions when marketing. Don't be that guy, you know. Uh, generally, just be honest about everything, right? And human when it comes to humanity, right? Don't be a spammer. Don't be, you know, that guy who goes everywhere with the same pitch and just copies and pastes that same email to everybody, right? Just be human, go to people and tell them, hey, I'm here, I have this awesome product and I wanna share it with you because I think it would probably benefit you a lot, right? And those are the three key things I've learned in my journey. And uh, now, the last point I really want to touch is you can launch well. You can make a product that will go viral on Product Hunt. You, you can totally do this. <laughs> it's not uh, a thing reserved to people who have like 50 million followers on, on Twitter or something. You can make a product that goes viral on Product Hunt. You can get a lot of success and a lot of marketing from, from that uh, launch. You can do super well. But then again, here here comes the another another issue. The biggest hurdle here is also mental, because most people, including myself, I, I went through this hurdle, have this problem in which we are afraid of sharing our things with others because we are afraid of feedback. Perhaps, hey, what if this person won't like what I made and I spent a lot of effort in it, right? It all comes down to we are all afraid of reactions. We are all afraid of what other people might think about what we're doing, right? And that's a big mental hurdle that a lot of makers, especially starting out, maybe with their first product launch, have to go through, right? Uh, my best tip here is don't be afraid of feedback. Use it as your advantage, as your competitive advantage. Use it to improve your product and you will get a lot of feedback that is people probably screaming at you and going like oh wow this doesn't work fix it right <laughs> but it's never take it for us a constructive thing it's never personal take it in a very constructive fashion use it as your competitive advantage and just take that feedback and run with it and make amazing things with that feedback make an amazing product right and uh Tips. Uh, I remember that uh, on my first product on launch, I talked to Dinuka, which was uh, which is the the creator of Maker's Kitchen, which is another great community you, you guys should check out if you're starting out into making. Uh, Dinuka told me a bunch of tips on how to make a successful product on launch. I'll probably release them on Twitter sometime if if he sends me that list again, and uh, it boils down to make it clickbaity. <laughs> It sounds like a bad thing, but really just uh, aspire for maximum clickbait. <laughs> um, live stream that launch because it gets a lot of buzz. And not only that, it's super motivating. Like live stream that launch, show people what you're making, show it down on Twitch. Um, 
And then again, also apply the three principles that I that I just talked about: transparency, honesty, and humanity. Be clickbaiting, but don't be non-human. Be a human. Be just yourself. Show people, hey, I'm making this. This is absolutely cool. You should really try it. It will improve your life by a factor of a million. You know, yeah. just be yourself. Plan that launch out, and of course. <laughs> Have fun with it. Indie making is not just about revenue; it's also about having fun. It's been a very fun journey. It's all about learning, becoming a better human, and uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to share. It's all I've learned in the past six months, and it's been an incredible journey. There's a lot of resources out there, and if you're if you want to create a product, if you want to change lives, if you want to change the world, make an impact. Go ahead, make a product, and do it because you can. So, you. thanks guys for listening to my little uh, massive knowledge dump. <laughs> oh, sorry, I can't. Oh, sorry. Introduce the gimmick clock. I'm showing to the people now. How about asking? Oh, asking is better. Sergio. Okay. Yeah. Some of us doesn't know what is the Maker Lab, so can you introduce a little bit? Show a little bit about Maker Lab. Okay, so, um, Maker Lab is a community of indie makers shipping products together, and there's a lot of people starting it out, right? There's a lot of people who are experienced indie makers, and they all get into place sharing their tasks, what they do daily, right? To stay accountable, uh, provide feedback, and just make a generally super useful community for everybody, right? Uh, it's currently it currently has two thousand members. It's uh, slowly growing, and uh, it's just been an amazing ride. And we are super open to bringing new indie makers into the scene and helping them out, providing positive feedback, and, and you know, staying accountable by just shipping, 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 shipping. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you. I'm going to send the link in the chat. At makerlog.com. Visit it. Make an account. It's absolutely great. It's not working. Something's wrong with it. Yeah. Um, how about the uh, community? So, a uh, little bit, wait a minute. I'll give it one second. About, uh, I want to ask people to ask questions in Slido during you guys talking. People can ask questions, so it's a little bit. Yeah, keep it one second. We're showing the people the Slido here. Okay. All right. I ask okay. Hi, guys. That is uh, Slido. You guys can ask any question on Slido. Just go to slide dot, um, slide dot or slido.com. What the event call is LA Um You can have any question? Ask me on the platform. <laughs> uh, where's the question slip again? Okay, okay. So, so, uh, Faso, right? Yeah. What's up? Hi, what's up? Xin chào. <laughs> Xin chào, everybody. Hi. Xin chào. So is it my turn now? <laughs> is it my turn? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is uh, Faja Silik, and I am from Singapore. Uh, Singapore and Vietnam is one hour away, and I hope you guys are doing okay back there. Are you guys okay? Okay. <laughs> so basically, I am the owner and founder of a creative design agency. Basically, I'm a designer. You know, I'm a solo founder. So I started my startup, or I bootstrapped my startup back in the year 2011. So my company name is Euphoria. So Euphoria means the higher level of happiness. So what I do is basically to actually uh, do design service for startups so i create logos i create uh, websites and also like name cards and also for social media ads i think I, i'm pretty sure that some of you guys here are designers anybody anybody here is designers can put your hands up 
Any designers? Whoa, that's a nice one. One, two, three. Anyone? Anyone else? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, I, I, I sorry. I mean, sorry. I'm a no code guy. <laughs> okay, wait. So most of most of you guys are developer. Developer, put up your hands. Whoa. Okay. Oh, okay. That guy is awesome. Minho is awesome. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank to uh, Winnie and Minho for inviting us for this amazing discussion in. Uh, Vietnam. I've been to Vietnam before and it's an amazing place. I really like Vietnam coffee. It's really nice. So I actually wanted to share with you guys about how I became from just an uh, independent, uh, just entrepreneur, like uh, bootstrap my startup. You know, it's a small business that I, I, I have started from my home in front of my laptop using MacBook Pro to actually to create these services. Uh, online. So back then, I was using MySpace.com. Anybody of you here know MySpace? Probably. Yeah. It's a music place. Yeah. But you know, it's a community where I share my products. And then after that, I went to um, Facebook and share and stuff. And then came along and then somewhere in the year 2016, I found ProductHunt.com. So I, I wasn't really sure about uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, to post something so I actually didn't really uh, post anything on product hunt but I was there in the community just to uh, upvote people and just check out people's products and how they actually made so um, basically I'm a designer you know yeah so so basically um, so it took me like probably I think more than about five years six years there were some uh, challenges that I actually uh, face because when I started my startup in 2011, I actually lost my mom, my dad, and my brother. So it was very challenging for me to actually start my startup after that. So it took me quite a while and I actually did a lot of uh, side projects. So after that, um, one of the things that, uh, that I faced was uh, there was a lot of anxiety and there was a lot of uh, fear because you know being being someone who is doing a startup you know sometimes you have projects there's a difference between like you know you uh, doing just one uh, worrying worrying about without any projects and another one is when you are worried when you 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 have like so many projects at once how many of you experience this i mean like i think many people experience right with no projects and tons of projects so i was facing these like challenges and um, wanted to find ways how to actually make myself better so it was very hard you know it was really hard so you know up here i have a punching bag can you guys see here it's punching bag <laughs> punching bag <laughs> so every day you know it just get me excited to when when i feel like a stress or something i will just go to punching bag okay so talking about my first product on product hunt it was it was actually I, I didn't launch the product on product hunt but it was really live for about four years so I was doing a production video uh, making uh, on a small community so we we, we make uh, we monetize uh, our platform through YouTube so we have uh, YouTube AdSense to actually make money and just make the website and then just share the videos and it kind of grew so Google is kind of like paying you, you know, so you can build a product, you know, uh, by using like YouTube, you know, it's simple as that, like making video content. I mean, I mean, some of you guys, are, you know, a coder and non coder, so you can build something that is really simple and kind of like grow and then you can get monetized and stuff like that. So talking about this amazing culture that we have, which is the makers culture basically it's an indie making independent so probably you'll be thinking oh no i'm gonna be broke so what am i gonna do so like you know there's a lot of challenges a lot of stuff like mental total mental like how Sergio actually says so basically it's not just about finance it's about work-life balance and also like the stuff that you really want to do like have fun you know like have fun like you know when i'm stressed i i, I play yo-yo like have fun you know, I'm a, I'm a professional you're a player, you know, like, I can do like tricks, you know, yeah. So you make tricks and you make products, you know, this is like a yo-yo trick, you know. Yeah, so you don't worry about making stuff, you can make anything, you know, you can make like, like internet stuff, 
probably can make any other stuff but you need to have balance in a lot of things and one of my challenges for this year is actually to learn coding so i want to shout out to benjamin spark for introducing me uh, code career in the community in the discord you can actually join his community and uh, there were a lot of amazing people who actually can teach you how to code like live coding and then like these guys would just say hey you know html you know css and stuff like that so benjamin spark kind of like guide me through because i had no confidence like how to build a product and or learn how to code or anything just being a maker i was just a designer and just a very basic basic developer like literally very basic so later on i met uh sergio so sergio runs get make a lot so each task you do you can just post they have this culture of openness where you know you share anything being honest having fun so much human as in like you can just do that and then just share with the community and share your products and get feedbacks and get praises and streaks and comments so you get this motivation and also i was part of the makers kitchen uh, community where you know it's a slack community so uh, there is this guy named Dinoka who actually made this, he created this. So that's how actually I met uh, Minho and also Winnie. So they are really nice people. You know, you should go up to them and ask a lot of questions. Their product is really awesome. You should check out. Yeah. yeah. And Thank also, go, going back, sorry, to Danish. Thanks to Danish for teaching me a lot of uh, coding stuff. And right now, for this year, I have three side projects to do, uh, which is uh, Open Startup. Uh, make make us make it make us merch and another one uh, is a makers marketplace so this is my one of the biggest goal that i want to do for this year side project so i think that's pretty much what i want to share thank you so much thanks so much for that punching back guys hi Janish. last person yep Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, today I'm sharing my uh, first experience of the product card that I shipped uh, in January. So, yeah, uh, it's Danish. My name is Mama Danish. And I'm working for a company as a part time. I'm doing uh, the contract job for four hours. And apart from that, I'm building products, like other bakers build. So I joined Product Hunt in last year, in December 18. So you guys audible? Uh, am I audible? Yeah, your, your voice is great, dude. Okay, cool. So uh, I joined Product Hunt in December 2018. And I see a lot of makers uh, is building product and shipping uh, on product hunt. So I was also motivated that why not building some products and ship on the product hand and get some uh, connection, get some uh, feed, uh, uh, connection on Twitter and whatever. <coughs> so if, if, if you are building a product, so let's first decide what you are building. So first of all, I figure out what I'm going to build. So I was uh, following a repository on GitHub that is a, a list of all public APIs that is built by Todd Modo. That repository have uh, around 54 K stars and they have around 600 uh, public APIs listed on the repositories. So it's really hard to find out which API is added recently. So, in the uh, there are lots of uh, issues created by the other makers that they start to they can find APIs. So what I does I uh, use that repository and uh, make the UI uh, that is called the public APIs and and the main issue was. Hello? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So, whenever you're building a product, first of all, define what is your main feature in your product. So, the my, uh, my feature in my product is uh, 
the API card will be a sorted according to date. If anyone is adding a particular API into that repository, so the API will be this on the top. So you can uh, uh, see that which API added recently. So you can check that API and build the product from with API. So you will be aware uh, in real time. No worry, to, no don't waste time to find the API in that repository. Yeah, just search it. Just search it and use it and save it in your public accounts. Yeah. So uh, I built this uh, UI in 10 days with whatever I know. Uh, I use ReactJS and use I use all free tools to build this uh, platform. I use AmLab for database and I use Glitch. There's always a Glitch that provides a layer of the API in the door. You can build API is free of cost. So, and uh, I use Netlify to host my website. So, all are free, no cost, and publish the product. So, when I done with my development and the testing, all these things, so I just go to the product hunt page and click on the ship button and fill all the forms, fill my uh, thumbnails, I create thumbnails, images, and just ship. So when I ship my program, uh, it's around 3, uh, 3 o'clock, 3 a.m. in the night. So I was checking my program page that how many people is uploading my product. So, so it's uh, two, uh, two hours. After two hours, it will need uh, 10 upvotes. So I was thinking, where is product company? So I was waiting for product committees, why not they are coming and uploading my products? So what, I, what, I, what is wrong in my product? So I was thinking a lot that, is it good or not? So there is no command, there is no response. And after three hours, there is a positive command comes out that, good man, good job. So I was happy that someone is there. So after doing these stuff, I sleep and get up early in the morning and go back to the home. When I uh, reach the home and see my product page, so it's uh, around six, six to eight ports. Yeah. And I'm happy that people are loving this product. So again, I come back to my workplace again, that I'm going back to my workplace and going to work. And there are lots of replies on the product and page, on Twitter, on Slack channels. So I have to follow them. Yes. And it's, it's cool that day. And I also got uh, my product is uh, product of the day, of that day. It's around 200 upwards in one day. And I was happy. And in next day, it's around 900 upwards and product of the week. And I was expecting that much uh, response from users. So what I learned from this thing that if you solve the problem of a particular thing, a particular issues, so that will become a product. So I will share you my screen and will show you the, my product. Is it okay? Actually, I think we're running a little bit over on time. We're supposed to be okay. here 10 minutes over. So maybe can you wrap it up? Sorry. Okay, okay. So with that, so I will just say that uh, if you are a maker of anything if if you are maker of a digital product if you are maker of physical product like you building anything stuff so you can make and build and ship in the product hunt so it's a really, really good platform to ship awesome so yeah, i think that's all uh, you can check my product is on uh, public hyphen apis dot xyz yeah we have the page open now so okay awesome i like the dark theme nice. <laughs> So yeah, uh, people. Uh, so when I uh, this is the second version. So I built the first version. There is no dark theme, no ODI. Okay. So when I share this product and well, people are giving feedback. You can add this. Thing, I can add these features. So in the second version, I built the login page, uh, login thing. You so can log in. You can save the APIs and you can toggle the dark mode and night mode. So I'm improving the and adding few more features. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And I also want to wrap up. Full, full, sorry. I'm pulling up Renee's too. We haven't, we look at yours. Uh, 
want to pull up my flag pole. That's not the right one. I don't know why it's not working. Renee, why doesn't yours pop up? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, thanks guys. We have some questions on Slido that you might want to look at real quick. So uh, thanks, Ben. You've been answering them very how about, rapidly. How about we share the screen share? Screen share? Oh yeah, we can, that's a good idea. Share screen. Yeah, share. This one. So we have some great uh, answers from you, Ben. Thanks a lot. So we have some questions. Have any of you guys monetized your product after launch? That's a, I think that's a great question right here. Who wants to answer? <laughs> Who wants to answer? <laughs> uh, you, you, you might want to like monetize at an early stage with, before you launch on the product hand so that you will be making money when you launch. <coughs> That was good advice. In my uh, in my opinion, a monetization is something. Well, it it really depends on your product. I I mean, if you're building a community, strive not to monetize but to include, which is something uh, that is super important when building community. If you're building a SaaS, uh, you can probably start monetizing right away, especially in launch. Um, it really depends on the type of product you're making. And uh, if you want to take it slow or fast. Yeah, to, to bandwagon on that, I suppose, um, consider, are you going for solving a specific problem or is it more consumer facing? Like, are you looking to uh, build like a huge user base and a huge audience? If that's the case, then you're probably going to, your business model is probably going to be advertising. You know, like think Facebook, for example, or Google. You know they're really really popular and um, they they make all their money through advertising but if you're more of a uh, like Sergio was saying more of a SaaS app kind of like um, uh, shoot Dropbox excuse me not Dropbox um, Salesforce then you know you're going to want to be charging up front instead of uh, you know doing the advertising model so as Sergio said it really depends upon your type of business Yeah, these are good questions. I mean, thanks for answering the questions. I mean, if, if, you, if anyone has more ideas, please drop them in. If you don't understand how to go here, it's Slido. Just stick on the table. Yeah, okay. But um, I guess we can stop the video here. But you guys can keep answering. I think maybe Ben will be around for a few questions uh, that people can answer on the site. <laughs> so we have a question from Pat. Okay. Wait, can we get one last question? So this is the last question we'll ask you guys on video. Um, we see it here. It's how many hours do you spend for marketing your product on Rocket Hunt and how, how much traffic did you get? Anyone want to answer this question? I think a few people talked about it. I mean, what about you guys? <laughs> Sergio is probably the, the best on this. He got a, a ton of traction. You got the most. Wait, uh, I'm going to answer it. <laughs> um, uh, product hunt uh, takes uh, time. Launches are complicated. You have to make good thumbnails. You have to make good screenshots. You have to make sure that every little detail is perfect. There's a lot of resources though, which uh, make this process a little easier. I think the best resource would be to use previewhunt.com by Andrew Apple. It's absolutely great for uh, previewing your submission and making sure every detail is, is just perfect at the moment of launch. And uh, you also have to launch at the right time, like super early San Francisco time, right? So keep that in mind. It, it takes preparation for sure. Well, we just opened preview hunts and it looks cool. <laughs> it's also it's already on Winnie's computer. It's absolutely great. It's the best tool. Thanks. Thanks. All right, so thanks so much, you guys. So we appreciate you staying up uh, for those abroad. It's late, so thank you and the other Americans here. Uh, we have if more questions come in. We appreciate your answers, but I think that was very helpful for everyone. We'll uh, uh, also, uh, any questions, uh, don't be afraid to uh, message us or tweet at us, Benjamin, uh, Fajar, uh, me, Matang uh, on Twitter. All of us were super open and super helpful. We love helping the community. We love getting people started. Uh, so I, my, 
my Twitter handle is Matane. You can reach me there. Uh, Benjamin uh, Fajara, go ahead and suggest your, uh, your Twitter handles. And everybody else on the, on the, on the chat. Yeah. Don't forget to visit. Don't forget to visit makervietnam.xyz, the Slack group. You guys should join there. And also, thank shout out thanks to Coder School. You guys rock. Thank you. Thank Coder you. School, punch man. <laughs> yeah, guys, and um, you know you can always find me on Twitter, just um, at Benjamin Spack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night.